Hi, I'm Julie Lynn Moray. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since we filmed. Thank you for your patience. We're back today. We're going to do something special. My husband is an expert when it comes to crawfish boils. So tell us what you're going to do today. So we're going to be boiling crawfish. Uh, I'm not fancy as she is. I'm not as fabulous as she is. And I don't think I'm frugal because I have to be able to afford her. So <laughs> today we basically double O Cajun. I'm going to take you from step A all the way to the end, step B. So from the time we clean them, season them, cook them, and peel them. Join us. We welcome you into our family. This is a Louisiana tradition and let's hit le bon temps roulette. So first thing you really need ultimately is a good knife. I prefer a bubble blade. Test it, it's true. At the end of the day, that'll help you cut all your ingredients and allow you to do what you need. Basically all it is is a souped up filet knife. So when you get your crawfish, typically your crawfish is gonna come in a sack. Your sacks range anywhere between 25 to 40 pounds. So when you're purchasing your crawfish, you ask the guy how much a pound. Therefore, you kind of have a good idea of how much you're buying and you also the price. Typically, if you're getting crawfish from Louisiana, if you're in Louisiana, usually your crawfish is going to run anywhere between two to three dollars a pound. Now, if you're getting it in another location, like we are in Georgia, it's gonna get a little bit more expensive. You're looking at $4 a pound. Ideally, the season runs and usually kicks off around Good Friday and it'll run all the way to the beginning of June. Now, being that we're in a pandemic, we've got more supply than demand. Crawfish is a social food. A lot of people eat it with family, friends, have a good time. Obviously, social distancing and some of the different protocols out there has kind of curbed that. So when we open up our sack, we're going to take our sack straight, open it up. We got a neat invention out of Louisiana called the crawfish washer. Crawfish washer is basically like a hot tub, or not a hot tub, but like a whirlpool for crawfish. Typically, all your crawfish that you're getting are going to come from either the basin or crawfish farms. So they come in, their bottom feeders, everything's pretty dirty. We wanna get out all that dirt and mud and everything that they've been, you know, somewhat filtering themselves with for the past couple weeks. And then there we go. So what we do is we dump them in the crawfish washer. Like I said, something really unique to Louisiana. They didn't have it grow uh, when I was growing up. We used to always wash them in an ice chest. Anything that you can put your crawfish in that's gonna hold water and potentially you can run it through a couple cycles of water, filling it up, letting it drain out. Therefore, the crawfish have a chance to really wash themselves off. Uh, they'll defecate in the water and you'll get a lot cleaner crawfish versus you just throwing it straight into the pot. That potentially, you'll sit and spend a lot of time on the other pot if you put dirty crawfish in your pot. <laughs> yeah, these are a little bit bigger, a lot bigger than the last ones. So they're called crawfish, crayfish, mud bugs, and yeah. swamp bugs? Yeah. So as our crawfish washer is starting to fill up, typically all the dead ones will float to the top. That's a good time to filter out the dead ones. The dead ones you'll see, they'll sit with their tails almost extended. This one's still got a little juice left in it. If it's a straight tail, it's dead. Yes, that's it. If it's got a straight tail, it's typically dead. If it floats to the top, it's typically dead. Like this. Now, depending on where you live, some people take the dead ones and use them for bait. Some people say, you know, oh well, it's part of it. But the dead ones definitely have a different taste. You want them to be as fresh as possible. Look how dirty this water is. This is why you definitely need to clean your crawfish before you boil them. That's it, that's it. If you don't clean the crawfish or clean any type of seafood or anything, especially during these times, 
I mean, you're putting yourself at risk, you're putting your family at risk, you're putting your party at risk. The last thing you want is a lot of people to come over, have a good time, party, and then the next thing you do is you send them all home with a case of diarrhea. <laughs> As a whirlpool, it basically keeps the water circulating. And then on the side, we got a drain. Once you get it up to the top, then what we'll do is we'll connect our drain system. For the sake of trying to keep everything as dry as possible, I connect the hose to it. Some people just will connect a straight drain. Now, if you do it in your in your ice chest, it's not hard at all to do the same thing. Basically, what you're going to do is put your crawfish straight into your ice chest, fill it up with water, crack it. Once you get to basically the whole top is filled with water, just pull your drain and run them through two or three different cycles. Right. Now we're going to wash them a little bit here. And then after we wash them, we're going to purge them. We're going to put some salt in there. Therefore, the crawfish have a chance to kind of cleanse themselves. The salt will also start to give them a little bit of flavor as they soak. So we'll let them soak and then we'll start prepping our ingredients. As you're gonna see, boiling crawfish, it's not something that you can just say, hey, we're gonna boil crawfish today. It's a process. To go from the beginning to end, it's gonna be all day. From the time we pick them up, we clean them, we prep our ingredients, we get them in the pot, we serve them, and then you really find out who your true friends are. It's because usually the last batch is the best, and that's the people that are gonna stick around to eat the last batch, but also help you clean up. And usually, most people, they eat one tray and they're out the door. And quickly tell us, so about how many pounds is in a sack? So, typically you're looking between 25 to 40 pounds in a sack. Most of your sacks, honestly, in South Louisiana are going to be 30 to 40 pounds. Now, depending on where you're going, get them. You know, you can call ahead and, and have the sack customized to how big your party is going to be. You know, if you don't have a lot of crawfish eaters or people that are familiar with it, because it is somewhat of a delicacy, you can figure two to three pounds per person. Now. If you're doing a crawfish ball in Louisiana, we figure anywhere between five to 10 pounds a person. How many pounds do you eat? I can personally eat anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds of crawfish. <laughs> so typically in Louisiana, when they serve them, they serve them in what we call like a crawfish tray. You can serve crabs, ball shrimp, pretty much anything you know that you're boiling plastic tray but usually one tray will hold about five pounds so that's a good indication you know one tray one person now obviously like I said non crawfish eaters two to three pounds crawfish eaters five to ten pounds and then your heavy eaters I mean can easily 15 to 25 pounds I'm gonna get them you gonna get them Come get on. them my mic get them <laughs> so here's a little test that we're going to do to get your Cajun card. And I'm going to make the cameraman see if he can get his Cajun card. You stick your hand in that crawfish pot, crawfish oh, no. washer, and move them up and down. Oh. Now, let's be honest, these pinchers, they'll get you. If you don't want to hold them, get this. Yeah. They'll get you every time. So that's why you got to be careful if you're going to pick them up. The best way to pick them up is behind the head. Or you can use these. See if we can get a big one. So you pick them up behind the head, right through here. Therefore, those pinchers and claws can't get you. All right, PK. <laughs> there he is. There, there you don't want
a lot of people have different methods, have different things that they like to put in it. Some people put the Cajun Trinity in it, which is celery, bell pepper, and onions. I like to call what I put in it the Caminata Trilogy. Onions, garlic, and lemon. You'll see a couple different seasonings. Zatarans is a big hitter. It's a little bit more commercial. Swamp dust. Swamp dust is a little bit more, uh, I guess, authentic, um, less commercial. You got new news, you got slap your mamas. Um, there's a ton of different Cajun all seasonings that you can use in your pot. You just want to make sure you have enough seasoning. Typically, we'll use anywhere between three to four pounds of Cajun seasoning. If you look at it, on the bottom, you'll see four and a half pounds on this one, four pound bag there. This is the concentrate. I like to use it as well. It gives a little bit more of a kick. You don't have to add a ton, but it gives a little bit more kick. Sausage, sausage, depending on where you're at, what you can get your local grocery store. Usually we like to try and go with some type of Raging Cajun Andouille sausage or any type of smoked pork sausage. Usually it'll kind of complete the boil corn, always a staple, red potatoes. And whenever you're preparing your corns, you want to cut them into almost like bite-sized pieces, almost threes. Um, usually one ear, we can get three pieces out of it. When you're looking at your red potatoes, you definitely don't want to cut them in half. You want to leave them whole because if you cut your potatoes in half, they're going to disintegrate with the boil. If you're having a hard time getting seasoning into your potatoes, you can take a toothpick, puncture small holes into them, but you never really want to cut them in half or cut them into quarters because they'll disintegrate in the boil and then it gets all over the crawfish. Lemons, personal preference, how many you want to put. Onions, personal preference, how many you want to put. Typically for a sack of crawfish, we'll go anywhere between two to four onions and three to six lemons garlic if you're not a big garlic fan then you can leave it out but ideally that's part of the commonality trifecta all right so i'm going to start with the chopping uh, or the cutting actually i'm going to cut the onions in half and i'm going to cut them lengthwise that way the root will hold them together if you cut them the other way they're going to all like split apart one more. Lemons. Oops. Perfect. These we're going to leave whole, like Blake said, so they don't disintegrate. I'm going to cut open. The sausage, you don't want them too small because too small is no good either, so let's see. I'm gonna cut these into like thirds, basically. And you can't forget about the Raging Cajun. This is my favorite spicy sausage. I'm telling you, I use it for all my apps or my Cajun cuisine. Um, when I did the video with the shrimp and sausage, the Raging Cajun Bites, I used this one. These are gonna cut slightly smaller because it's thicker and it's spicy. And not all of your guests can handle spicy. And now for the garlic. You want them naked, so you're going to split them, split the garlic head and then just kind of smash them. That way you can peel them around. Now you can also buy this at, at the store already peeled, which would save you a lot of time. So if you look at the water, the water is pretty clean now uh, in comparison to what we were looking at earlier. But you did drain it. You drained, drained it from it, the first time. Yeah, we'll drain it two to three times. Therefore, it cycles out a lot of that dirty water that the crawfish just either had mud on their bodies uh, or the sack was dirty. And you'll see the same color change if you're doing it in ice chest or not. And now you're going to put in salt for what? Yeah, so usually uh, I'll put in salt towards the end and just let them soak in the salt a little bit. We call it purging the crawfish. 
uh, allows the crawfish to kind of ingest some of the salt salt water. Therefore, from a seasoning standpoint, it, it just gives it a little bit extra um, kick to the tail meat uh, and to the head fat. Um, also, typically, some people say because crawfish is a freshwater um, species, if you add salt, it forces them to throw up and get rid of <laughs> any of the nastiness because they think, you know, they're out of their habitat. So you definitely so, want to rinse them from that. Yeah. So you would use about a whole container of salt? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, usually a quarter to about a half of Morton's. Okay. Um, or any type of salt that you're going to see, you know, in the big can. Can I do some? Um, just generously some? apply. It's not like you have to measure it out. Uh, then take your hand or if you have a big crawfish spoon. What does that one say on it? Uh, this was a gift, Christmas gift. Uh, I got two big spoons and on the tip of it it says cooking like a Cajun. So cooking like a Cajun. We just stir them up a little bit. Therefore, we really mix that salt in. So you can see the salt will also make the dead ones float up to the top. And you see how this one didn't make it. Make it. He started to kind of float up to the top. Like I said before, some people eat the dead ones, they don't care. Depending on where you're at, you could use it as bait. Yeah. Typically, we'll throw out the dead ones. Yeah. I hope you like my daddy and mommy's channel. Bye. <laughs> One of the things that takes the longest is getting your pot to roll and boil. So depending on the size of your pot, it depends on how long it's going to take. Do you know how many gallons this pot is? It's an 80 gallon pot. So, you know, typically you could probably do about two sacks pushing it. It's perfect for one sack. Most of the time you're doing one sack at a time on one single burner. If you got a double burner system, you know, you can put out more crawfish. So you want to probably fill it about two thirds to half full. And I'm quickly going to say something. If you're hosting a crawfish boil, it's probably smarter to fill this up ahead of time, put all your seasonings in it, and then get that broth going. Because the longer it sits in all those seasonings with the lemon and the garlic, the potato, or not, sorry, not the potatoes, the lemon, the garlic, the onion, the salt, and the swamp dust, or the zatarain boil, the better. You want your crawfish to really take on those flavors. So it will save you a lot of time that when your friends are starting to come on in, that it's already caught, because you can always fire it back up. But if you're gonna wait, for it to go from this temperature all the way to a rolling boil, it's going to take what an hour it takes us almost. It does, and usually she gives me a hard time because she says the process takes too long. But that's the beauty of boiling crawfish. It's like putting things on the smoker. It's a time-consuming process, but let's be honest, fellas, it gives you a little bit more chance to drink more beer. <laughs> All right, now it's time to fire it up. So you hear that sound. That's a pretty distinct sound in South Louisiana. On a Friday, Saturday, that's the sound of that propane coming through that high output burner. But if you're gonna do something of this size, you gotta make sure that you've got a big enough flame. And another good rule of thumb is always make sure you've got a backup propane tank. Because there's nothing like telling everybody, hey, I gotta get my boil back up. I gotta get everything back hot again. So always have a backup propane tank. So typically we just cut the top off the port and salt and dump a whole can of salt in there. Like I said, my personal favorite, Swamp Dust. We're gonna put almost the entire bag. We're gonna leave some of the bag for the end once we put them back in the ice chest. As you can see, that nice smell, that nice red flavor. A lot of your all seasonings, Cajun. The main ingredient is cayenne pepper. So once we got 
put our onions. Now we're gonna get our garlic going. So it's smart to like pre-separate these into what's gonna go into your broth, which is the onion and lemon and the garlic versus your corn, sausage, and potatoes. Yeah, typically your corn and your potatoes is gonna take a little bit longer to cook. So we'll drop those in before we put our crawfish in. Therefore, when everything comes out, everything's cooked at proper temperature and it tastes really good. If you try and put your potatoes in too soon or your corn in too soon. It's gonna disintegrate. Well, also if you put it in when you put your crawfish in, it won't cook it in time. So we squeeze our lemon. Dropping our onions straight on in. Dropping our garlic next. Like I said, we're gonna bring it to a rolling boil. Once we bring it to a rolling boil, then you start to see some smoke coming out the pot, and that's when we know it's time to drop our crawfish. So, I like to use a little Zatarain's concentrate. Uh, just to kind of give it a little extra kick. Um, this is obviously industrial size. They come in small portions. Depending on how spicy you like it, what's your audience uh, flair for spice. Um, some people would just put a drop. Being that we have some pretty good eaters today, we'll add a little bit more. But we already have enough seasoning in there, but this just will give it a little extra pile make your lips swell up and your, and your snot come out your nose. So like I said earlier, you can get a toothpick or you can use your knife, um, but if you really like your potatoes to have some flavor other than just, you know, having kind of not stale potato taste, just puncture holes in them or if you're having trouble getting your potatoes to get seasoned because a lot of times that's people's problems. Not like just the surface, yep. It cooks the potato evenly. It's going to be so delicious. All right, there we go. Shake it up for some luck. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. So this is a Cajun challenge down in Louisiana. If you can drink a beer without the crawfish pinching your nose. I cannot believe it's not pinching your nose. You're crazy. Oh yeah, baby, we got lucky that time. Woo! Crawfish challenge. Woo. Nice. Say bon. Just like the Pope and the white smoke. The true sign that our pot's ready to go. You see the white smoke coming out. If you look inside, we wow. got a nice roll and boil. How long do you think that took? Anywhere between 25, 30 minutes, a minute. All depends on how much fuel, how hot you can get your fire, how big your pot. So like I said, 80 gallon pot, we're able to get it to a rolling boil within about 25 minutes. You got that nice white smoke. You can see all our ingredients really turning up. Almost there. Paper scissors for the next beer run? Yeah, I'm gonna do rock. Ready? Gotcha. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Hold him. He didn't listen. He didn't listen. Hold him. Southern hospitality right there. We always take care of our guests. That's what it's all about. So now that we got our rolling boil, what we'll do is we'll start with our potatoes, our corn, and our sausage. Typically I like to do that about anywhere between five to ten minutes before I drop my crawfish. I put it separate, therefore they don't overcook, and then I can dress it on top. And you can see it'll really start churning and burning now. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So at eight minutes, I'm gonna pull my sausage, corn, and potatoes. We'll strain them real quick. 
let it drip off. We'll put them back in once I get my big ball and can out. I don't know what you would call it. Ball and pot, ball and super pot. Usually call it a basket. Basket, that's it. Thank you. Carol, basket. Killed her, husband, whacked him. Fed him to the tigers, they snatched him. Carol, basket. So tell me that it didn't happen. Carol, basket. Dump them into the basket. As you can see, my water's clear, so at least I know that they're clean. If your water was dirty, you definitely probably want to rinse them a little bit longer. That's 35 pounds of crawfish. Make sure we don't leave any stragglers behind. Shake them up. Going back in the pot. Everybody kind of goes back and forth. Cook time, cook time. So what's my cook time? Depending on what family you're raised in, everybody's kind of got a different theory. 325, 420, 530. So what I like to do is on my crawfish, once I have my rolling boil, I go with a 420 method. I let my crawfish boil for four minutes, then I shut my fire off, let them soak for 20. I'll pull them at that 20 mark, and then I drop them into my cooler, and then just let them sit for about five. What I like to do is some people do, some people don't. Once I finish boiling them in at four minutes, before I start letting them soak with the fire off, I drop a bag of ice in it. That allows the crawfish to cool down a little bit quicker, makes them easier to peel, and then they suck in all that flavor. Let's do it, baby. So you can see my water height's perfect. I don't have to worry about anything overflowing. Like they say in the south, it's gonna make you slap your mama, boy. <laughs> He's so not proper. I can't take it. Okay, so at four minutes, we turn off our fire. Fire's off. Looking good in there. And then, like I said, what I like to do that some people don't, some people do, I'll then take a bag of ice. Make sure your ice is clean. And we're gonna dump it straight on in. And we'll let them soak for 20 minutes.
So we got 20 minutes in of soaking. Now it's time to pull them. As you can see, when we're going to pull our basket, make sure you definitely have a good strong hold on it because that water's hot. We'll let it drain a little bit. Super heavy too, huh? Super heavy. We got 35 pounds of crawfish plus everything else in there. So we'll let them drain. And oh my God, it smells so good. Straight into the ice chest put some swamp dust on them and Call then let them day. sit for about five minutes before we serve and then after that they'll be ready to eat some people go straight on the table with them i prefer to put them in an ice chest therefore we keep them hot you got a big crew that can knock out a whole basket of crawfish at one time then throw them on the table if you're trying to keep them warm throw them in a the chest so we got the rest of our swamp dust we'll put our swamp dust on them and you don't have to and then we shake it up Take our small serving bowl, mix them up. You can see everything is still whole. Corn looks good, potatoes look good. And then we'll just let them smoke for about five minutes. Steam inside the chest. So we let them sit for five minutes. Now it's time to serve them up. Like I said, usually one tray will serve about five pounds in it. You see we got our potatoes, we got our corn, we got our sausage, and we got our crawfish. So if you got some heavy eaters, fill the tray up. If you light on eaters, you want to definitely serve your crawfish hot. You don't want to serve cold crawfish. That's why we keep them in the ice chest. If you got a big party, you'll see a lot of people throw them all on the table, but they're betting that they can consume them before they get cold. Like we say in Louisiana, laissez le bon temps rouler, which means let the good times roll, eat up. Like my dad used to say, boy, you better eat, because if you don't eat, you're going to fall through your butthole and hang yourself. You're going to get so skinny. So classy. So classy. So we've taken it from the beginning to the end. Now we're at the best part of the day where you get to actually eat it, enjoy the fruits of your labor, enjoy the process. So peeling a crawfish, right. a lot of different methods to it. First timers, beginners, obviously where the head and the tail come in to join each other, most people are gonna eat your tail meat. Tail meat is pretty white. Now all your fat, that's my favorite. All your seasoning is going to be within the head. We call it crawfish butter. It's so good. Crawfish butter, crawfish fat. Yum. Love in the head, however you want to refer to it. If you overeat too much of it, then you won't be able to eat as much tail meat. I personally like to eat nothing but tail meat. So once I have my tail off, then it's going to peel just like a lobster tail. As you can see, I can take it all the way down to the bottom knuckle and it peels right off. And then you push and it comes right out the tail. Some people like to pull out the inside, the intestines, the poop line as some people call it. And then this is the tail meat that you eat. And for those that like the butter, you either can smash it and then suck it to get all the yellow orange butter out of it. Or you can do like my mom does, which is she removes it and then she just takes it and sucks it. And that way you don't get splattered with the butter. And that's it. Either I, way, it's so good. Bon appetit, right? That's it. I personally, I just like to pinch the tail meat off. I eat for volume. Pinch the tail off, don't even peel the tail. 
pinch it and suck it straight on out. <laughs> now, I do have some uncles back in the day, part of the Cajun challenge. They would take the whole crawfish and eat it up. Oh, Lord. Okay. Hey, so if Blake's way doesn't work for you, the other way you can do it that gets the tail out easy is if you gently twist it, then you crack it along all the segments. If you crack it along all the segments, it loosens up the tail meat and then it comes out easily. Bon appetit. Thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you coming in, having a family experience with us. Crawfish is definitely something that's unique to the South. It can be unique to any party. Special thanks to Paul Boudreaux with Boudreaux's and Feast 26. That whole crew was amazing in supplying the crawfish. Another shout out to Atlanta Highway Seafood. If you're looking for some of the freshest seafood in the area, definitely check them out. Shouts out also to Pelagic Fish & Co. and Bubba Blades. Without them, none of this would be possible. You guys have a blessed day. As we say, laissez le bon temps rouler, let the good times roll. C'est bon, baby. One, two, one, two, three, what?